But Al Hoogie, he, uh, talking to him just in the lunch break, he's uh, he's got a little bit up his sleeve. He's going to get that R1 off the line, he promises me. So uh, let's have a look at this one. The lights are on now. We're ready to go. Uh, no Seth Deborah on the grid, so uh, we'll check that one out. Tony Rees gets a great jump, as does uh, Scotty Moyer. So Scotty Moyer's managed to get himself a handy start. We've got uh, uh, Dylan Telford and Dave Sharp in there mixing it, but it is going to be Al Hoogie's going to sneak into about second place with a nice little tight line around turn one. So uh, Tony Rees already with a five bike length advantage, heading into turn two and three. The S is here at uh, Town. Up into National Motorsport Park, then go back to Al Hoogie and Scott Moyer. So these guys were separated by about uh, two bike lengths between the three of them last race around. This one shouldn't be any different. Six lapper here, and you're going to need to strap yourself in, folks. This is going to be good. And Dave Sharp, if he can hang with these guys, he showed he had the good pace uh, last uh, race around. So look out for Dave Sharp if he can hang on to this trio in front and make it a full on four way. Uh, well done, Dylan Talbot. He had a big crash here yesterday, so for him to be out there uh, on that uh, TR20 Aprilia, uh, that's uh, full credit to him. And uh, also Finn Ruther. Out there, he's uh, credited uh, into the Superbike B class, but uh, certainly uh, mixing it with these big boys and the full credit to him. So here it is, six laps, Superbikes, it's on. Right, indeed, it is on, and uh, what a fabulous start. And uh, already, Al uh, Hoogie's let you down there, Brad, so make sure you keep him honest to that at the end of the day. He's an absolute shocker. And uh, But it was amazing, in fact, that both Al Hoogie and also fellow Yamaha pilot in uh, Scott Moyer both saying just how that old demon, how that Tony Rees has still got it. Unbelievable. Everything they tried, they threw at him. The kitchen sink, the whole lot, and they could not get past him. He's an, a legend, and proving it at an absolute. Oh, somebody just has. Scotty. Yes, Scotty Moyer. Oh, it is out. It is out to get through. Yes, indeed, out. Yes, just trying to pick up the difference between those two because, of course, they're both part of the MR team and uh, there's uh, just a little bit of a difference in their uh, letters. There's a bit more white-coloured in uh, ours. That's the way we're able to pick them up. But uh, blue bikes and basically darker letters. But what we can now see is the uh, uh, blue, red, blue as we put the uh, red between the two blues. And now that Al has gone past, and what an amazing move to go through in the uh, flip-flop over there on uh, the turn from uh, 12 and 13. And he went through, and at this time he might have bowled so he's making up for his terrible start out there at the forefront of this race and he's managed to get past uh, Tony now can Tony claw it back but look at the margin that he pulls out front that is huge already and for uh, Scotty trying to get through now again on the tail of Tony going around that uh, super corner here beautiful to watch as he uh, drive out of there and around you've got to keep that power on all the way and they're getting that advantage and look at that now from Scott Scott Moyer getting up on the tail of Tony what can the two of them do about Al can he get far enough in front to keep out of their way he's pulled off an amazing overtake and manoeuvre to take the number one position and he's doing it uh, so well here. Back here again with uh, SJ Cavall who's looking at the top here. Uh, SJ, do you want to go super bikes one day? Oh, I don't think at this stage, Neil, I don't think that's on the cards. I think we're uh, quite happy in 600s because this is, um, these things are they're monsters. Eh? People just don't quite realise that these things are actually really like, uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say intimidating. Well, I suppose when you first get on they might feel a bit intimidating but this has got so much power. It just literally, every time you turn this, this rod along, they want to pull the rod. It's just so much power. And of course, they're, they're trying to stop them as well. And you know what these boys are The turn one here at the moment is there's a bit of a tailwind in here, so you're actually it's, it's pushing you in here quite hard. So uh, trying to, to slow a sort of 200 or kilo bike into there, um, it's, it's not easy. Man. Oh, indeed, uh, Brad, what a great way to pick up the start of this race. And uh, man, oh man, has that Al Hoogie got a break and gone or what? Absolutely. 128.7, the fastest lap we've seen here all weekend. So uh, Al Hoogie, a bit between the teeth and gone. Altham, Window Systems, JCR, Yamaha. And uh, this is the Al Hoogie we've uh, come to see over the last couple of seasons. He's the 2020 New Zealand Superbike champion. Uh, didn't quite uh, have enough for uh, Mitch and Damon Rees last year, but uh, this is looking good. So promising stuff, Al Hoogie. Uh, Tony Rees there. He's uh, 1.5 seconds now back. Back from Al, just on that lap alone, and uh, with Scotty Moyer breathing there, so uh, work to do for uh, the old hand, Tony Rees. Uh, Scotty riding really well, so uh, he's double classing, he'll be really uh, feeling this, and uh, good to have Scotty Moyer back on the racetrack, but Dave Sharp, Dylan Telford, and Finn Ruth are still your uh, uh, running top six, but uh, this is all good. We well, had an opportunity to catch up with Scott over the lunch break, and uh, here he is with uh, two R1 Yamahas, and he's actually got a preference of this bike, and on paper, there's actually the other bike is a better one that he should have been riding, that's what he was on yesterday, but he said, no, nah, I think I'd like to go back to the this bike so he's got the other bike it's all part of the Altherm JCR team of course he's the brand new member on board with the team and uh, nice to see him up there he will be a deserved candidate to be in that lineup and here he is starting to show some class he's got to start
start all over again. So I said to him, hey, buddy, have you got rid of those diseases? He said, no, I can't get rid of them, Neil. They're so much part of me, so much of my history, and I'm a hard guy. I don't want to get rid of them, really. So there you go. They're still sitting back in the garage at home, uh, waiting for another day, maybe. But at this stage, it's all on for the Altham JCA Yamaha as we see uh, this new man in uh, Scott Moyer starting to grab things. And grab it he is, because when you're on the tail of Tony Rees, you know you're a high-caliber rider, and he's doing it so well. I said, hey, what about the 600? Of course, double class with the two of them. And he said, oh, that's old Rex's bike. So Rex Mincher, a shout-out there for the Taupo uh, legend. He said, that bike has been in every uh, uh, corner and every crash and every uh, uh, kitty litter around the country. And he says, it's even been ripped in half and ripped a bit. So uh, as SJ laughs in the background, and for anybody that knows Rex. Hi, Rex. Hope you're out there, mate. Hope things are well for you. You're one of our root trip real characters. And I'll tell you what, bike, mate, your bike doesn't seem too bad. That's, of course, back in the 600. So there we go. The two bikes for uh, Mighty Scott Moyer, the local man out there and racing it here at the moment. And SJ's mesmerised by the racing. He's, he's put the white flag up, as I would well. I wouldn't even go to 600s, let alone uh, super bikes. But, uh, yeah, saying just what these are like. Pull your arms out of your sockets is what I say to MX2 riders in motocross about when they go MX1 racing. And they say a uh, similar uh, comment. Uh, what we've talked about with this event, uh, SJ, is we might be missing some quantity. That's the state of the nation, so to speak. But, man, we've uh, left none of the quality behind. No, absolutely not. There's uh, some certainly some uh, through all the classes, some really top riders, and there's been some really good close racing as well. So, you know, even though people haven't been riding, they've certainly come out here and they're really thrown the kitchen sink in. So it's been really cool to see. And I think I think the general vibe in the pits is that it's been a really good meeting, and everyone's enjoyed it. And everyone's just enjoyed being here at the racetrack. So um, I think we certainly made a lot of people get behind it and, and get, get the job done. Uh, lucky with the weather. Also lucky with the, the new management here at Taupo who have been right behind it and they've done a fantastic job this weekend with uh, making sure that all of our needs have been met, you know, we haven't... Um, What's their first motorbike meet? Exactly, so we've, they've done a you know, big shout out to them, they've done a fantastic job and I'm sure there'll be little things that they'll learn from, from this. Um, we as MNZ are constantly learning all the time, all these meetings throw us up something slightly different, but um, look, I think the fact that we had two clubs work together as well to get this meeting done is another credit to sort of those volunteers behind the scenes that are really saying, hey, look, we're going to have to do something different here, you know, what can we do? Can we combine? Yes, can we? So it's cool to see people working with that continue, continue because this may be what we're looking at for a while. Exactly. Yeah, well said. All right, Brad's been keeping an eye on the race for us. Yeah, we're on uh, one and a half laps to go. The white flag ready and waiting for Alistair Hugenbosum, our uh, former New Zealand Superbike champion, the former 600 Super Sport champion. He's won uh, uh, many classes in New Zealand road racing, and uh, this is uh, the cream rising to the top of this weekend. 3.8 seconds the lead. We've still got Tony Rees ahead of Scotty Moyer. Scotty has tried everything, and including the kitchen sink. He's thrown it all at Tony Rees, and Tony continues to uh, hang on to that one there. So uh, white flag uh, is going to be out. So out of turn 14, down the front straight, it's going to be Al, and then Tony and then Scotty so that's your top three and uh, it is one lap to go here the points are uh, pretty close there's only about uh, five points separating these three in the uh, overall so uh, a big shake up on the cards because uh, Al he's the one five points back off Tony so he'll make uh, uh, well most of them make all of that back up yeah, top, right they'll, now so, they'll yeah. tie they'll, so they'll tie for points and I'll then uh, Scotty will be hanging in there by only a couple of points as well so yeah. uh, all on here for the overall and uh, Alistair Hugenbosum uh, exactly what he needed to do he got out in front early and has been able to manage this race we've got Tony and Scotty who have managed to sort of bridge that gap it was three and a half seconds uh, not long ago and uh, certainly not that at the moment so uh, fireworks maybe still to come here uh, the boys have been saying how hard this track has gotten on their tyres and uh, even these six lap races they're finding the uh, back tyres going off midway through so uh, have a look at this one uh, half a lap to go it's exciting stuff we've still got uh, Dave Sharp there in fourth place lapping in those 132s he's done a 151 uh, 131.5 rather so he's uh, that's uh, certainly some good pace uh, around here and then uh, Dylan Telford uh, he's there in fifth place with Finn Ruther uh, the one in about uh, sixth place so well, let's look at this one here we're not far from the finish uh, they're down in turn 11 now but they're bunched right up it's uh, anyone's now so uh, look at this it still looks like yeah, you can see the white helmet uh, Tony's there in second has he got something up his sleeve we've only got to get through the flip flop and we are home it looks like uh, something uh, with Scotty he's just sort of dropped off a little bit but uh, out leading them into 12 and into 13 I think he's uh, got that defensively done Tony not quite close enough to have a move but uh, certainly uh, got this one going and here it is, uh, Alistair Hugenbosum is uh, pulling the wheelie. Tony Rees is going to finish in second place and Scotty Moyer in half a second separating the top three when they cross the line. That is excitement. And uh, a 131-1 from Al, so uh, well drastically back off his pace uh, from midway through the race. So hopefully everything a okay, but that is exciting stuff. And uh, 
tied on points heading into the fifth and final race of the weekend. Ooh it is on here. Dave Sharp gets home in fourth, Dylan Telford home on the TR20 Aprilia in fifth place and Finn Ruther uh, there uh, in sixth place. So awesome stuff. Uh, Superbike uh, six lapper and I tell you, I don't think Al wanted that to be a seven lapper because he got reeled in pretty good there. So uh, oh, drama. All right, so yes, go through those points. 81 points for Tony Rees, 81 points for Alistair Hugenbusum, and it's sitting there at the moment on 60, sorry, my apologies, on 73 points, 73 points, so he's got more here, so not out of the picture. Dave uh, Sharp, Finn Ruther, uh, Seth Devereaux, and uh, Dylan Telford, a little further back to count, but uh, that uh, trio, super delight, super exciting, and great to see. Big thanks to S. Jacob Al for joining us as uh, he then uh, returns to the pits, and uh, what an input to have from that man. Just